Hello guys, PJ here again on another bright and sunny British day, or not as the case may be. Today we are working on a 2009 Mercedes B-Class. This is a B180 and I will be fitting to it next base dash cam with the aid of a hardwire fitting kit. Now, basically buying a fitting kit makes the job very simple, very straightforward and fully reversible should you need to take it out because you're selling the vehicle or maybe it's a lease, I don't know, something like that. But you can take it out. There's no soldering, no cutting of wires, nothing difficult to do. It's nice and simple. I'm going to show you a few tips on how to hide the cable, bits and bobs and the whole job start to finish, even taking your time, should take about an hour, no more than that. So first things first, let's have a look what's in the box and start preparing the cable for fitment. This is basically everything you get in the box. So what we've got here is a replacement power cable, this particular one terminating in a mini USB. So it's sort of universal, fits quite a lot of cameras, that one does. The other end terminates in an earthing point that you put to a chassis ground, so behind a chassis bolt or similar, anywhere that will ground the item out. And then a power connector, which we will be taking to the fuse box, but like I say, it's gonna be plug and play. This is a basically uh, a filter, a ferrite filter, and it opens on a hinge this side, so it's got some clips here. You just pop it open and wrap the power cable nearest the mini USB through it, round the back of it, and then back out of it. This is to aid with DAB radio interference. So nothing to do with FMAM, just DAB. I will be honest with you though, if you've got DAB in your radio, and you want to fit a rear camera, you're probably going to have problems. Rear cameras with DAB radios are a big issue and normally you lose your DAB reception, even with these fitted. With this one, this video, I'm just covering a front camera. So we'll be putting this on anyway, just to show you how it goes. We also get here two fuse spurs. So we've got the large one, which is fitted to a lot of commercial vehicles still and some Mercedes's and mini blade fuse. Now what you've got here is a two or a three amp fuse to run the camera and then at the side a socket to put the fuse in that you remove from the fuse box. Now we're going to be using an accessory position fuse that goes on and off with the ignition. And so that fuse when removed will go in here. I will show you that bit later on and uh, it's not too difficult. So I said we were going to prepare the power cable. Let's have a look what tools are ideal to get the job done. This is generally what I will use. The most important item, which I'll show you separately, is this. This is a plastic leverage tool, and it's used basically for levering plastic trim. Now, if you use a screwdriver or something metal, you're gonna put little dints in the plastic in the dashboard, it's gonna look a right mess. We don't want to do that. It wants to look factory fitted without any marks at all. Buy yourself one of these, or a little pack of these. They're normally available on eBay, Amazon, or local car shops, sort of two or three pound. They're very strong, so you know you can you can unclip trim with them, which we will be doing. So, like I say, any plastic tool is fine; it won't damage anything. Metal, big no-no. So that one, most important tool of the whole kit. We've got a couple of cable ties. Um, what they're going to be for is putting around the power cable. I'll show you shortly what I mean. A pair of wire snips. You're always going to need them. Let's face it. Long nose pliers, I use these for pulling the fuses out of the fuse box because they're quite recessed. So to get them out, I always use these. Yes, the car comes with a little plastic gizmo to like pinch the fuses and pull them. It's generally not very good. So because I do this day in, day out, every day, I just use a pair of long nose pliers. Electrical tape and a multimeter or one of those test probe screwdrivers. So in other words, where you touch a circuit and it illuminates if it's live. That's all you're going to need to do this job. So let's have a look at preparing that cable now. So with the ferrite filter open, what we're going to do is put the cable through the middle, wrap it round the back and then back through the centre again and then snap it short. Like so. Next up, we're going to get our cable ties, wrap them around the cable, snip the access off and then just to be sure, cover them in electrical tape. This is basically just to pad them out and it stops, like a lot of cable ties have a sharp edge when you've cut them. You don't want that rubbing on the inside of the headlining over you know months or years and making a mess of it so it's just to pad it out so it doesn't rub the reason i put cable ties on the cable is to help the cable stay put above the window screen under your headlining you know if you hit a big pothole the last thing you want is the cable dropping down in front of the window screen while you're driving along so it's just to bulk it up just to hold it in place 
with that, I'm going to put a bit of tape around this one and I'm going to start tucking this up along the window screen edge. When tucking your cable underneath, just be careful. It's made of like a substance, you know, sort of fiber substance. You don't want to pull at it like a, you know, go at it like a bull in a china shop. Just take your time, ease it with your fingers. If need be, put your plastic leverage tool under it and pull it. And then tuck it until you get to normally the A pillar, just here. And we're going to go behind the airbag. Now you can reach behind the airbag by pulling this rubber trim off here. So we pull the rubber trim down. You normally put your fingers behind the airbag, just feed the cable through and then down the post. So here we are on the side pillar. Like I say, you can get your fingers locked right behind the airbag, no problem at all. Pop the cable down, all the way down the edge until we get to this side panel here. This pops off, so you're gonna get your plastic leverage tool and just sort of pop it off. Just watch your glove box edge as you do it and the, obviously the edge of your dashboard is quite soft as well. Now the spring clips are quite tight, so just be aware of that. Like I said, I normally start down the, the stronger edge, this edge here. There you go, you can take that away. Exposing two bolts, either of which will be fine for your earth connection. These are 13 millimeter. Go ahead and remove one completely ready for your earth cable. Here we have my prepared earth cable. So what I've done, popped a ring terminal on it and a washer behind it. So it sandwiches up nicely when I bolt this back in. Now I do this daily, so I tend to snip off the little horseshoe that comes with them because they are very fragile and can snap. Screw your bolt back in, and that is your earth connection completely finished. When popping your dash panel end back on, pay attention to the hooks. Don't snap them off, they sort of go into the, the edges there, so it sort of levers shut like so. So you should be left with your cable here, just under the glove box on this right-hand drive car. The fuse box, which is actually in your owner's manual, you can have a quick look, is buried behind ugh, all this padding and cabling. There we go. So what we're going to do is pull the carpet right back and then push this lever and this opens on a flap. Revealing your entire fuse box. So what we're going to do now is run the power cable up behind this power and drop it down into the fuse box area. Next up guys, we're going to use our meter or our test probe to find an accessory position circuit that goes on and off with the ignition. Now you don't want anything to do with airbags or ABS, you just want an accessory fuse. I do a lot of these, so basically I normally go for this one. There, so with the ignition off, zero voltage. Pop the ignition on, that fuse goes live. So with the ignition off, we're now going to pull this fuse out and put it in our fuse spur. With all the excess cabling all bundled together and either cable tied up or wrapped some electrical tape around it, it nicely tucks to the side panel behind here out of the way. Now feel free to test your camera at this point if you want to plug it in and give it a try before you shut all this and put the carpet back down. It's probably a good advice thing to do. But with your fuse spur in, you're ready to go. So I'm going to shut the lid, put the carpet back down and give it a test. This particular camera is an X-Base 522. In the box we get a little bump pack here about how to use it, how to install it, how to pair it to your phone for the little app so you can view all the, the video files or run them on your computer. Get the camera itself. There we go, it's a little bag. So you've got a couple of little stickers to peel off the camera there and obviously it's a magnet mount so we just pop that off, a little magnetic cover there and we need the actual window screen mount. Come with two different ones, these do. With a sticky mount, like so, which is what I'll be using. And they also come with a suction mount, in other words, like a sat nav users, so you can just stick it on. And this particular dash cam look comes with a plastic leverage tool. Isn't that handy? Some do, some don't. But then again, this is one of the higher end ones, so, you know, it might well be that. Okay, let's pop this on the window and give it a try. And there we go, all mounted. Let's lean over and pop the ignition on. Moment of truth, guys. There you go. Little power light on. Oh, I've just dropped the key, hang on. There we go guys, had to lean over and start the car. You know these Mercedes has got the plastic keys, fell out, fell on the floor, 
But there you go, ignition on, engine running, camera running. That is how you fit a camera in one of these cars. Thanks a lot for watching and bye for now.